The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, um, and thank you so much for joining us today. This is Shinomi's Make Your Holiday Holiday Web Party Webinar. Um, today we're doing Quilt the Holiday. My name is Latifa Safir. I am a Janome educator, and I'm going to take you through a project today where we are going to – my screen isn't – okay, there it goes. We're going to um, make a placemat and napkin set. The name of this project is Flying Tree, and um, the name comes from the fact that we utilize flying geese in the project, and we kind of put them in an arrangement where they look like modern, sort of modern trees, um, and so that flying trees. And there's also a napkin that accompanies this project as well. So for the holiday today, we're going to be using our Memory Craft 8900 QCP. Today we're going to focus on a couple of different optional accessories that are really awesome. So the thread stand, the border guide fit, the straight stitch clear fit as well. Um, we are making 14 inch by 20 inch placemats and 20 inch square napkins as well. So a little bit about the 8900. Um, 8900 is our top of the line quilting at our sewing only machine for Janome. Um, it has a year 11 inches of throat space. It's the top of the line sewing only machine for Janome. Um, it's a built-in walking foot system and a lot of other really wonderful features that makes it perfect for a project like this. So when this project is posted online, there'll be three pr templates that you have to print out. We actually use paper piecing for this project so that it will make it a lot easier in the long run. Some people are a little bit afraid of paper piecing, but this is really easy paper piecing. And the template just helps ensure accuracy since each of those flying geese change in size. So for each placemat, you'll need a total of two sets of the A, B, C, and D templates. And um, so you're going to print a total of eight for um, four placemats. So we're doing a set of four placemats and four napkins for this project. On the right-hand side, you'll see the Flying Trees napkin. It's a corner template. And it's really just a template so that we can cut a nice smooth curved corner for our napkins. We have curved corners on our napkins. Um, and you're just going to print one of those for the project. For this project, your fabric requirements are pretty simple. You just need a yard and a third of background fabric. It's pretty, roughly a third of a yard for each placemat. So if you're making eight placemats, you can double that number. You're also going to cut out a total of eight 6 inch by 10 and a half inch from that background fabric. And the remaining of the background fabric you're going to reserve to use for your paper piecing. A half yard total um, for your geese. And that's going to be 8 yard or fat eighth per napkin. So if you want to use different fabrics for each napkin or you want to kind of mix it up, that kind of gives you a framework for how much you need to use. This is a project that's great with scraps. Um, you, the largest geese you do need it about a 9 inch by 4 inch piece, roughly, um, to paper piece that in. So keep that in mind when pulling your scraps. You want kind of medium sized scraps on that. You need four pieces of batting. These are quilted placemats, so the 15 inch by 21 inch and four 15 inch by 21 inch pieces of vacuum fabric. Thread for piecing and quilting. So keep in mind if you want to use different thread for your quilting and piecing, think about what's going to show up nicely on that background fabric for your placemats. For your napkins, you just want four pieces of your backing fabric, 21 inch by 21 inch. Four, um, the front of the napkins have a color, two colors uh, or two pieces of fabric. So, so four 10 and 3 quarters by 21 inch, I mean four 10 and 3 quarters by 21 inch, and four of color two 10 and 3 quarters by 21 inch. So first I want to chat a little bit about the thread spool stand. They wanted me to feature this um, accessory inside of this webinar. And it's an accessory I really, really love. But it's, it was hard to incorporate it directly into the project. So I just want to talk about it a little bit up front. It attaches to the back of your 8900 or most of the larger top of the line sewing machines for Janome. And it's a really awesome feature to have. I know on the 6600 they have spool, the two spool stands at the back of the machine, that, and that was a feature that a lot of people love. And this actually gives you that accessibility and more. So this one holds up to five spools of thread, and also it holds your larger spools of thread. So if you have any um, varying sizes of thread, this makes it really convenient. 
there's also there also has a vertical spool pin as well, which a lot of thread likes for, for the thread to come off of the spool pin when it's in a vertical position. So we're going to start our project off by paper piecing our geese. So we're going to start off with template number A. Remember there's templates A, B, C, and D. And on each template, they're numbered 1, 2, and 3, so you can know the order in which you're piecing it. And a little hint that I like to do, if you look in the upper right corner there, if you print one extra set of templates and you cut these up, you can use them as a kind of a rough cutting guide so that you won't just have to keep pulling fabric for your paper piecing. That's one of the, the um, issues with paper piecing is you never know what size piece or shape fabric. So if you use your cutting guides, you lay them on top of your fabric and cut roughly a half inch around the outside of those templates that are cut up, then you have a really great shape and size that um, makes it easier for you to paper piece. So on the templates, one and three are your background fabric, and number two, which you'll see is the, the triangle in the middle, is always going to be your geese fabric. So if you're doing scrappy geese or you're doing geese of all the same color, then you know number two is always where your, your geese are going to go. You're going to place your background fabric on the wrong side of the template so that it completely covers section one. Overlock your stitching line by about a quarter of an inch. Actually, I do it a little bit more than that, just to give myself a little bit of wiggle room. And then you place your geese fabric right sides together with your background fabric. You will flip, to, flip to the printed side, and we're going to pin it in place. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put our border guide fit onto our machine. So let's talk about that border guide fit. So paper piecing is actually a pretty unusual application for this. This is a 9 millimeter border guide fit. Um, it's, a app, it's available for most of the genome, so you have to make sure you, just, you get the 9 millimeter and not the 7 millimeter kind if you have the 8900. The reason why it's so great for paper piecing in this application, for one, it's a clear fit. Um, and so you have really great visibility to your stitching lines on your template as you're sewing. Number two, it has a really great center marking in front of the needle. So it's really easy for you to line up your, your needle with your stitching line on your template. And then it also has a large flat area. So this flat area helps to um, kind of smooth out the area around, underneath your, paper, uh, your foot on your top of your paper piecing template so that sewing is nice and smooth. So there are more traditional uses for this fit, and we'll get into that a little bit later. And those are basically aligning your decorative stitches. But this is actually a good fit to use for paper piecing as well. So we're going to continue on that. You have your border guide fit on. You're going to stitch through the stitching line on the template, removing your pin when you come to it. Um, and just all you want to do is make sure that those two fabrics underneath your paper are overlapping um, that stitching line by at least a quarter inch, and that's just to ensure that you have your seam allowance um, on that. You're going to flip it to the front, press your fabric open, and then you just have to add the um, fabric into spot number three on the paper piecing template. So, and then you and then you have your first geese unit done. So you're going to repeat paper piecing for your remaining template. So remember, we have eight total templates, two of each, A, B, C, and D, for each placemat. So you're going to uh, repeat paper piecing until you've got all of those templates sewn. And then you can also repeat that for remaining placemats if you want to do it kind of in a batch instead of doing it one placemat at a time. So for trimming your piece, once you get these all pieced up, it's going to look kind of rough with fabric kind of hanging off the side. So you're going to flip it to the paper side, uh, paper side up on your um, in your cutting mat and using a rotary cutter and a, and a ruler, you're just going to use the outside guidelines on those templates to trim it off. And when you flip it over, you have a nice, neat geese and with perfect quarter inch seam right above the tip of, or the point of that geese. So you're going to have eight geese um, of varying sizes. The layout picture is to your right. So there, it they're laid out where the smallest piece is at the top and it increases in size. And you also, in the very beginning of this, um, I said we're going to cut out a total of eight six inch by ten and a half inch background pieces. So this is where we're going to add those into, with, along with the geese so we can sew our placemat. So for sewing the actual pieces together, 
This is still with the paper on the back of your paper piece skis. First, we're going to attach our 9mm clear view quilting fitting guide set. And this time, we're going to have a quarter inch guide on it. So let's talk about that foot. That's foot OV. Anybody is interested in the foot number. This is one of my favorite feet. It's a multi-function fit. So when you open the package, you're going to have three pieces. There's going to be the actual foot with the, all the clear markings on it with the screw in the top right corner of it. And you're going to have a stitch in the ditch guide and then a quarter inch guide um, included in that package. And sometimes when we pull these feet off the packages, they look a little bit intimidating. But once you get the explanation behind it, they're really, really easy to use. And this is a great one. So the functions on the fit, they're eight inch seam lines for clear view quilting. So if you look at the fit, and then we're looking at the one in the top right corner. That's the nine millimeter version of this fit. The eight inch seam lines allow you to um, the eight inch seam lines allow you to uh, be able to quilt um, your quilting lines very close together, which is really great. The, the big trend out now is matchstick quilting. So if you are interested in doing matchstick quilting, the eight inch seam line guides underneath the clear fit, and that's without your the guides on. Then with the quarter inch seam guide, you do patchwork piecing for perfect quarter inches with that flange on the side. There's also a stitch in the ditch guide as well. So the stitch in the uh, ditch guide, the guide actually fits right in the middle of that foot and it allows you to put the flange of that guide directly into your seam line and get a perfect stitch in the ditch. And another really great thing about this foot is that a lot of people want to do quarter inch piecing, but maybe they're piecing triangles with a lot of fits on them or, and they don't like the flange. So you can actually do quarter inch piecing without the flange in this foot as well. To put the flange on the fit, it's very, very easy. The screw in the top right corner of the um, of the, the foot, you simply loosen the screw. On each of those guides, there's a little U-shaped section. You slide that U-shaped sec section on, and you tighten your screw, and then you have your flange on the fit. So it's pretty easy to use. These are, of course, our Snap-on quick change feet as well. Um, so they go into your machine easily as long as you have your, your um, form on your foot. Oh, my computer is really slow for some reason. Um, going to the next page. So what we're going to do on the next screen, sorry about that guys, but next we're going to piece, we're, we have all of our geese and we have everything laid out. We're just going to sew these together. I'm um, sorry. There we go. So our clear view foot is attached. We're going to set the machine to an automatic quarter inch. Now, mind you, we already have that quarter inch foot on with the with the guy attached. On the Janome 8900, there are some quick select features on the front of the machine for kind of your favorite stitches. One is your quarter inch um, stitch. It's D95, and it does a couple things. One, it moves the needle over to the proper position for a quarter inch seam allowance. And the second thing that it does is it shortens the stitch length in your machine. 1.8 is a little bit short, so sometimes I'd bump it up to 2.0. Um, but it's a perfect seam a setting for your quarter inch fit. So we're going to sew each of the columns together using the quarter inch fit and sewing through the seam line on the template. So we actually have two different points of reference that help us to maintain that quarter inch seam line. So if we, uh, and this is the layout for the placemat. So we're going to sew each one of those columns together. And then we'll press the seams in the direction that the geese are pointing. Um, and that seems to allow us to have really good points in our geese. As you're sewing through the, that top point on the geese, on, when you're attaching the uh, individual geese together, you just want to make sure that you, when, as you're sewing that seam line, you're maintaining your quarter inch seam, make, make sure that needle goes directly through the top point of that geese, and you have perfect points. Um, press seams and directions the geese are pointing on both of those. And at this point, you can remove the paper from the back of your geese. So you can fold and crease the paper along the seam lines and just rip it out. Um, of course, that's kind of the fun part of paper piecing. Some people love it, some people hate it. So after you've gotten it all uh, folded, I mean, all um, the paper removed, it pressed out, you can sew your two columns together, 
pressure swing to one side or the other. It doesn't really matter. And then you're going to have your placemat top. You're going to repeat with your remaining placemat. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to quilt our placemat. On this particular project, because we kind of want to use an envelope backing on it, we don't want to put a binding on it, we're going to sandwich our quilt top chest with our bedding. So I use spray base a lot, especially on small projects like this. So you can lightly spray base. I just use the Jen Taylor quilt basting spray. The 505 is really awesome. And when you, if you're working on this project in a shop, then it may be great to um, just do pin basting, which is really easy. I personally don't love pin basting, but it works just as perfect for a project like this. So we're going to attach our border guide fit. Now this is the more traditional application of your border guide fit. Um, and that what it used, the lines on the fit are used to be able to perfectly line up lines of stitching, whether they're straight line stitching or decorative stitching. So we set our machine for um, D1. Once again, D1 is one of those six select buttons on the front, or you can scroll through with your jock wheel on your machine to find D1 center needle position, which is 4.5, and we're going to increase our stitch width a little bit to 3 since these are quilting stitches. We want to have a nice bullet quilting stitch. Um, line up the first dark line. So the, there's red line markings um, on that foot. So I line up the, the marking, the first um, vertical line to the right of your needle with the edge of my placemat. And I just use that as a guide to to sew my first line. You can also, if you're more comfortable with it, you can also, using any kind of quilt marking tool, you can also draw your line directly in a placemat. And we're, and we're going to um, sew that first line. After that, we're going to use the outermost line on the right-hand side. And you're going to line that up with your previous line. So as you're sewing this, you want to actually keep your eye on the line that you, your alignment mark on your foot and the stitching line on your placement. You do not want to keep your eye on the needle. We are used to looking at our needle as sewing, but in order to have really great straight lines, we need to keep our eye um, on the alignment point and not on the needle. So you're going to just sew across the full width of the placement and continue sewing these lines until you filled up the, the top. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're going to fill this in with another decorative um, stitch. I use a really basic triple stitch. It's a stitch five on the 8900. You can use any decorative stitch you want on this. It works perfectly fine. With this particular foot, it gives you room to be able to do full nine millimeter decorative stitches. Um, and so it has the opening to be able to do that. So feel free to pick a decorative stitch that you love if you don't want the kind of the simple clean look with just a triple stitch and a regular straight stitch. So I use a triple stitch, center needle position again, and at this point I use a stitch length of five, which is a really long, but I want a nice big bullet, and of course this is more decorative than, than quilting, so the five gives me a really big bold um, stitch. At this point we're actually centering the foot with, within those the two previous lines that we've sewn. So those two previous straight lines that we sewed with stitch D1. We're going to center our foot in between those and use that as the guide. And we kind of, all the markings on the foot help us to line that up. So, and then we're just going to stitch across the whole width of the uh, placemat, and you're going to continue stitching that until you have your quilted placemat. So we'll talk a little bit about the quilt border guide. Um, I mentioned this already, it's great for the 9 millimeter width stitches. And it's great for lining up stitches, including decorative stitches. So you can use the markings on that foot to focus on a reference point. Um, on, so we see the, on this particular picture, the rightmost red line is lined up with kind of the right-hand side of that decorative stitch. And that's the point where we keep our eye as we're stitching it across whatever we're sewing. Um, and it's also great for straight line quilting as well. So if anyone does straight line quilting, then this particular um, foot really helps keep everything lined up nice and neat. So we're going to square up our placemat. Um, you're going to trim down your backing to your placemat size. So it was already a little bit bigger than the placemat itself. Um, and depending on how heavy your quilting is or what kind of stitches you used on, that size may vary. So once you get your placemat squared up, you trim your backing to the same size as the placemat. So you simply place them, um, the placemat top and batting. 
on top of your backing and trim it down. Place right sides together, and then once again, we're going to put our clear view quilting foot on and select our stitch 95. Once again, that's our quarter inch automatic setting on our machine. So I press the locking stitch before sewing because we're actually going to turn this inside out, and it's going to be a little bit of strain on the beginning and end of that stitch. So I use my locking stitch on your machine. Um, I didn't put a picture here, but it's the circle with the circle inside of the circle with the dot. It's a button right above your foot. And um, the locking stitch just sews three or four stitches kind of in a, or it's about five or six actually, right in this kind of the same area. So it locks your stitch on the back of your, whatever you're sewing. Um, so we press the locking stitch and then we start sewing. I kind of start halfway from one corner and using the quarter inch seam, so around the perimeter um, of the placemat sandwich that we have here. I stuck about three inches from the starting point. So you want to give yourself enough room so that you can comfortably turn your placement inside out and also to, point, to um, push your corners out as well. Before I turn it, though, I'm going to trim my corners. And this helps me to also get really nice sharp corners as well. Um, so trim your corners. You see that in the, the bottom right-hand picture. We turn it inside out. And we use, um, I just use like a bamboo stick to turn, push my corners out. And there are some specialty tools out there you can do that with as well. So we're going to make sure our corners are pushed out all the way and that everything is nice and flat. And we're going to press it. I move the needle over, keeping the, um, the clear view quilting foot on. I move my needle over to the 9.0 position. We want just shy of a quarter inch seam for this. And then I top stitch my placemat around all sides. So then we have our completed placemat. Um, and for our napkins, the fun thing about these napkins, they have a nice sort of sophisticated look to them. Um, we have curved corners. We use a really simple, the same decorative stitch that we use in our placemat. So if you do choose to, um, to change your decorative stitch in your placemat, then feel free to reflect that on your napkins as well. It has three fabrics, so one backing fabric and two fabrics on the front. And I like a nice um, sort of substantial napkin or a napkin made out of a heavier fabric. So sometimes I want to use my quilting cottons for a napkin. So I thought it would be nice to make these napkins a, a double thickness with the quilt cotton so that it, or they're nice substantial napkins. So you're going to take the two 10 and 3 quarter by 21 inch fabrics and we're going to sew them together along the long side and press to one side. So this just creates the front of our napkin. I stack that front that we just sewed together with our 21 by 21 inch backing fabric. And I created this little, um, it just says flying trees napkin corner template you see in the upper right hand corner. And instead of trying to find a bowl or a cup or something that's the right size for your corners, I just created this little template. So you can lay this along, along one of the four, your four corners. And I just use my rotary cutter and take my time with it. Um, you can, if it's, if that's difficult for you with a paper template, feel free to trace this onto um, a cardboard or cardstock or template plastic um, as well. But the paper or template works just fine. You can even do print it onto a heavier like cardstock, and it would be a little bit more substantial. And so we're just going to cut the corners off using this corner template um, and have nice rounded corners. Once again, I'm going to attach my border guide foot to my machine. Um, Sometimes it's really hard. I want a half inch uh, seam allowance on my napkins so that when I turn them and fold that seam allowance in and have to stitch on top of it to close that, that, the opening, that it gives me enough room to be able to do that. And sometimes it's really hard to keep an eye on that half inch seam allowance on our foot. So what I usually do, there's a couple of ways you can do this. But what I usually do when I attach my border guide foot, I eyeball where the quarter, the half inch seam um, line, um, where it lies kind of on the border foot. And I use that as a reference point. Some people, that's difficult to do. And the other thing you can do is put your border guide foot on. Look at the half inch seam marking on the plate of your foot. This is with your needle in center position. And just take a piece of masking tape and place it on top of your border guide um, as well. And that'll help to keep in line an exact measurement for that. So and then once again, we're going to start um, sewing about a third of the way down one side or a third or halfway down. 
using the locking stitch first as we begin to sew. So as you come into your corners, you want to slow down a little bit and take your time turning as you go. Um, they're 20 inch by 20 inch napkins, but the diameter on that corner is pretty small, so you want to take your time and turn as you go to have nice smooth corners. Um, stop and lock your stitch about three to four inches from your starting point. Once again, trim your corners down. Um, it really, really helps to create nice smooth rounded corners. I, I trim it down generally to about a quarter of an inch, and then we're going to turn it and press it. Once again, you can use your bamboo stick or whatever kind of turning um, tool that you have to push your corners out, and um, so that when you press your napkins, they're nice and flat and rounded. So we're going to press our napkins, and we're going to make sure that the opening where we turned our napkins at, that the opening is pressed flat and straight along that edge as well. And at this point, we're just going to top stitch. Um, I leave my border guide foot on. And the first stitch that I did was just maybe about a quarter of an inch from the edge all the way around the perimeter. I used a standard straight stitch. So stitch D1 on your machine. Um, and it's a, I use a three. Uh, I increase my stitch length to three. And then after that, I use the the right hand, the line all the way to the far right, the red line. It's kind of hard to see on this because it's red on red. But I use um, stitch number five, which is that triple stitch again. But feel free to use whatever kind of decorative stitches that you like on here. And you can just sew decorative stitches onto your napkin. So I followed just inside the border all the way around the perimeter. And then I also sewed a decorative stitch along the length of the same line in the middle of the napkin as well. So those are some projects. That's a project that you can do with your MemoryCraft 8900 QCP. Um, once again, the thread spin is a really great feature to have on any kind of project that um, you're doing with your 8900. It's just a great feature to have. It attaches directly to the back of your machine, and it gives you a lot of flexibility with the kinds of threads that you can use. The border guide foot is great for borders, but as we saw, it's also great for other applications as well. So in this particular um, situation, we did quarter inch piecing. Um, I mean, that quarter inch piecing, we did paper piecing. Uh, we used it for a half inch seam allowance. And it just gives you a lot of flexibility. So feel free to pull your um, additional accessories out with your machine and see what other applications and uses you could have for it. Then the straight stitch clear view foot is a really, really great foot. It has a lot of flexibility for quilting and for piecing as well. I thank you guys very, very much, um, and I hope that you enjoyed this and that you learned something from the project. Um, I'm looking at questions now. So I'm not sure, uh, will the thread spin hold large cones of thread measuring three inches across the base? Um, three inches across. It looks like it will. I just actually jumped up and looked at my machine. Um, I've never actually tried it with three inches across the base, but there is at least a two to, looks like it's about two to three inches behind each of the spool pins. And this, um, and if you don't put thread, if you don't put thread right next to each other, it looks like it'll hold a pretty large spool stand. So we definitely have to pop it on and try it to make sure. But um, are there any other questions out there? Well, that always seems to go a lot quicker than I think that it will. Um, this project will include a PDF when it's posted, and that PDF will include your templates that you need for piecing your geese, um, and also the, ins the written instructions as well for your project. So thank you very, very much for attending today. And um, I hope you learned something, and I hope to talk to you soon. Thanks so much.